it is. That's the sound of the Behringer Deep Mine 12. Yeah, we finally got hold of a unit that is ready to be reviewed. And this is not going to be the full review. The idea of this is really just to give you a flavor of the synth and ask if you have any questions. Because as we know, this is a new synthesizer from Behringer. And I expect you do have a lot of questions. And you can leave those in the comments and we'll get round to answering, hopefully, all of them in the full review. If you don't know what this is, uh, Behringer DeepMind 12 is Behringer's first synthesizer. It's an analog 12 voice synthesizer at the unlikely price point of 999 US dollars. UK price is going to be uh, announced at some point in the future. But basically, it's got 12 voices with two DCOs per voice, low pass filter, 24 dB and 12 dB, uh, two pole switchable with a boost. Now, this was actually modeled originally on the Juno 106. That's where they kind of got their inspiration for this, but it, this is completely different apart from slight similarities because it's got a lot more going on. So if we look at the front panel here, we've got two LFOs, an ARP sequencer, DCO1 and 2. Okay, there are only two waves on DCO1, which is sawtooth and pulse width. And on DCO2, there's this kind of tone mod wave, which is slightly different, which is kind of unusual sound. Uh, Character display, scroll wheel, data entry, VCF, VCA, three envelopes. The thing about the envelopes is quite interesting because if I switch the envelope display on and then switch curves on, what I can do is actually change the curve behavior for each section of the envelope from I think it's exponential to logarithmic and through linear. So you can get these really unusual and quite tweaky waves. There are three envelopes. There's the amplitude envelope, the VCF envelope, and a mod envelope. So let's get a couple more sounds on the go. This is a 12 voice unison bass sound. With a bit of uh, filter action on the mod wheel. Actually, if I bring the mod wheel up, you can see it's got a light that goes on, which is a nice little cosmetic thing. Take another look at another couple. This is uh, called Event Horizon RD. I think that might be Richard Devine, because I think he's done a bunch of patches. So let's take a listen. As you can hear, it does those sort of beautiful analog washes, really amazing, because this has also got a four engine DSP uh, board on board, which gives you four high quality DSPs, in fact, uh, high quality DSP effects. In fact, they're powered by TC Electronic and Clark Technic, but there's also a lot of algorithms that you would expect to see uh, in things like the XR18 and the X32. So a lot of this stuff has come in from sort of the Midas world and that's in fact the engineers who uh, put this together are based in Manchester. So I guess it makes it there's some sort of British heritage there to this synthesizer. Let's try another couple of sounds. Ah, does it do jump? Well, this is a BC, Brass BC, which is a Ben Crosland patch. Uh, he just announced uh, there's a video of him showing a lot of his patches. I think this is one of them, but uh, so yeah, I suppose you could say it does jump, if that's what you want. Let's take a look at some more. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Should probably find something with uh, maybe a couple of, uh, with arpeggiators on it because it does a lot. Oh, this was a nice one, I seem to remember. This is using some of the uh, yeah, rack amp, reverb, and the minus EQ. And again, it's a 12 voice poly, 12 voice unison sound. Let's try another one. Yeah, this is using the arpeggiator. On hold, 
Let's see what effects we've got now. Reverb, chorus D, auto pan and delay. Um, well, this is some of the eight mod slots that we should just take a look at because there's also uh, eight modulation slots. I think there's over 130 destinations here, uh, and some of which can be self referential. So you can have, so mod slot eight affecting the depth of mod slot one, two, or three, or four, that sort of stuff. Let's see what else we've got. one of the original patches by Rob Belcham, who's uh, the main, the lead software engineer on this. Let's see what else we got. Another Richard Devine patch. Again, utilising those effects, and the effects do sound actually really nice. This is uh, Blue Dolphin, another Ben Crosland patch. Sounds like we've got oscillators tuned like a fifth apart. A bit like the old uh, sort of D50 soundtrack type thing. Anyway, look, I'm not going to go through everything on this because that's going to be saved for the review. But suffice to say, uh, if you want to have, if you've got any questions about this synthesizer, please do leave them in the comments below and I will endeavour to answer them in the full review of this. Oh, just one more thing I should mention. We have got uh, wooden end cheeks here. These are the, uh, this, uh, as I say, this model is kind of like one of the close to the final production. If, I don't know if you can see back there, but I've got one of the earlier prototypes and the, the end cheeks weren't so wooden. They were kind of veneer, but you might be pleased to know that they're nice real wood. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. As I say, please do leave your comments below and we'll get onto them for the full review. Mm.